Swatting Preparedness. This is part one of a four part series on what swatting is and how it's deceiving communities. Hello, this is Jay Martin, Nebraska Department of Education School Safety and Security Director. The video you're going to watch is a video lesson on swatting. You'll learn not only what swatting is, but how is swatting deceiving communities? How is it impacting us and what can we do about it? Realize some of this material in this video you might find a little unsettling, especially if you've experienced an event recently. We're going to talk about the preparedness, prevention, response, and recovery as it pertains to swatting and how it's deceiving communities. So what is swatting? Well, the origin derived from tricking law enforcement SWAT teams into responding to an incident. Typically what they're doing is they're creating an emergency call to a dispatch center, imposing a threat to require a large police response. Typically they're saying there is a hostage, a bomb, an active shooter, or some other armed suspect activity. The message from the swatter to the call taker is this threat is still live and an immediate response is required. Who is the desired target of a swatter? Well, the call is a hoax, deceiving the call taker into believing it's a real incident. So individuals were some of the first people in their own homes being targeted. Pizza delivery people were being called to come deliver a pizza with large cash amounts on hand. They would be robbed as they delivered the pizza. Gamers, they would film each other being swatted when they were upset with somebody who they were playing a game with. That's that faux piece. Businesses have been swatted. Obviously, we've been seeing a lot of schools and campuses lately. Events have also been swatted. Anyone who has personal information online is susceptible to being a target. It could be a prank, revenge to a perceived wrong, a diversion to commit another crime, or just an intimidating tactic. How are they getting your information? Doxing is one of those. Posting personal, private information online onto these public platforms using your location, IP address, and revealing that to everybody. Social media platforms are another way of gathering that personal information to use against you. Social engineering is also another means where they pose as a customer service rep and try to get some of your personal information. You're going to see that in the upcoming video. So be aware of this online deception. In this video, you're going to see the hacker use voice over internet protocol. You're going to see them use some spoofing where they're getting your personal data, pretending to be that person. You're going to see the phone actually look like it's coming from this individual, as well as the voice over technology that is used. I feel like I know pretty much everything about you. I instantly don't trust you. So am I going to be safer today thanks to you? You and every other customer will be safer today thanks to what you're willing to let me do. Well, let's get started, I guess. Okay. So you want to assume that everything that you put on social media is public. Information that can be found in places like this can be used to authenticate you with different companies. Do you remember this tweet? Yeah. I used this to gain access to your current address. What? So what I did is I called up this furniture company right here and I basically said, hey, we're gonna buy another one of these pieces of furniture, but I need to make sure that I don't accidentally have the wrong information on the account. And they said, no, I mean, you ordered something a while ago, but the thing that you ordered, we shipped to this address. And yeah, I, I think I got his updated address, which is pretty scary because that happened in 30 seconds. I got your current address. I got your birthday from Twitter. I called like pretty much every business that he ever listed that he used on his Twitter or Instagram. What you have to understand is when you do that, 
I now know which companies you use and I know which companies to call as you. So I'm gonna be doing these phone calls. I'm gonna be actually live hacking. So when I call, your phone number is gonna display on their caller ID. This is Joni O'Sullivan. Who are you really? <laughs> no, this is, this is Joni O'Sullivan. I can tell you my address, phone number, date of birth. Whatever, whatever you need to know to verify, verify that, that that's, that's really me. me. That's wild. I am on the road right now and I'm having trouble getting access to my internet, but I need to transfer points to my friend for a bridal shower. Hopefully you can help me out over the phone. I have all the information. I have 90,000, is that correct? So the first and last name is Rachel Toback. Oh, they've been transferred? Okay, fantastic. They're gone. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Are your points gone? They're gone. That is crazy. When you call this airline, it's going to be coming from my number. Yes. As you know, I have a flight leaving Vegas. I'll put you in the middle. I'm trying to do this like personal essay thing. So can you move me to a middle seat kind of in the back of the plane? I know you probably don't get that request a lot. Oh, perfect. Okay, so it's a row right before the last row and it's in the middle seat. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're in the back of the plane, middle seat. <laughs> I had an exit aisle. I know. Think about how much you have to do to get into your accounts online. You have to have a password, mm. two-factor. We are basically living in the dark ages on the phone compared to how hard it is to break into accounts online. Until these companies mm -hmm. learn to change their authentication protocols, there are certain things you can do to help protect yourself. Remove your geolocation tagging. When you are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, there's just no need for people to know exactly where you're staying in those places. After that, I would say, products that you buy, services that you've purchased, help that you try and get online, like on Twitter, that you're probably gonna wanna do privately. So maybe in DMs, because I'm just gonna call them up as you and try and get your information. I think the most important thing is that I'm not gonna victim blame you. Yes, sure, there are things that you can do to make my job a little harder. Ultimately, it is the company's responsibility to keep their customers' data safe. And updating their authentication protocols over the phone is a really good way to start. I'm sorry about that, Donnie. Well, I'm so glad I agreed to do this, Rachel. Why do they SWAT? There's a lot of speculation into what motivates a SWATer to doing what they do. Gamers towards live streamers, bullying, extortion, or really anything the SWATer desires can be their motivation. Online gamers, as I mentioned, were some of the first. What they were doing was using their large list of followers, accessing their video camera, and then filming it as the police showed up and swatted the online gamer, setting them up for basically a home invasion with police officers coming, thinking there was an active shooting situation going on. Hackers will utilize passwords to access those home cameras, again, to watch that chaos unfold. Extortion for online currency is also one of those things potentially being used by squatters. Why they squat continued, there's political motivations, targeting people, politicians, groups with opposing points of view. Haters or extremists utilize swatting to promote their agendas or narratives. And again, early on, we saw a lot of celebrities being targeted. In this picture here, that's Ashton Kusher being swatted in his own home, right in front of his own home. The usual ruse in a celebrity swat is their home is being invaded with shots being fired at the home or within the home. Where are swatters located? Some are people you may know from online interactions and they might live in close proximity. Others might just be acquaintances you know online. You don't really know these people, but they might be on your social media platforms. Many of these folks, especially with the school swattings, are from overseas. They're using, again, the internet to access your information, impose those fear tactics, into our communities. 
I've included several resources. The Nebraska Department of Education School of Safety and Security website. You can also use our QR code up here in the far right hand corner. One of the ways to divert any type of threat that happens at your school is to have an anonymous reporting. Safe to Help Nebraska is one of those. We have the number there. If you're using some other anonymous reporting service, utilize that, but also include Safe to Help Nebraska. It is a free service. I have the QR code for that as well. If you have questions about that, you can contact me, which will be on the next slide about Safe to Help. 988, anytime there is a mental health issue that you're dealing with, uh, Crisis Line is there for you. Even after these swatting events, that Crisis Line is there for you to uh, contact if you're having um, some issues there. We have the Nebraska Family Helpline. 888-866-8660 is another way of accessing that information. I'd like to thank the Public Policy Center for helping me uh, with putting together some of these videos and things within this presentation. I also need to thank Monty Lovelace for putting out um, some different information. For those of you that are not getting any type of communication currently from the NIAC uh, or the Fusion Center, you need to get put on to uh, Monty Lovelace's email distribution list. And if you would like to do that, his information is right here at the bottom. Send him an email or give him a call so you can get put on the distribution list when he has information that goes out to our school security or administration. Thanks for watching the Nebraska Department of Education swatting video. If you have any more questions about this, you can contact me directly. Or if you have other questions about school safety and security in general, you can also contact me as well. Thanks again.